and cussing and swearing and talking about the last illicit sex act they had, you stand there and politely smile and tell yourself it's because you don't want to fail. Amen. Repent, America. Amen. How long are you going to stumble between two, two opinions? And the people said not a word. we got a silent church, a corrupt government, and a dying nation. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Bell's prophets are 450. Let's see. You're a minority. You, most people don't think like you. I don't care what most people think. You can outnumber me 401. That doesn't make you right. Amen. Listen to me, you compromisers. Listen to me, church members that don't want to offend. Listen to me, you church members that want to be popular. Don't want to suffer peer pressure. He was outnumbered 450 to 1, and he didn't compromise. Doesn't matter. Numbers don't prove you're right. Amen. But the whole class thinks it doesn't matter or rip what the whole class thinks. And you ought to have the strength to sit by yourself and not compromise. Doesn't matter what your whole workforce thinks. Well, I might lose my job. You don't think God's big enough to get you another job? Amen. Amen. That's your idol. You think they're your supply of blessings and not God. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Elijah said to the people, I, am, I alone am the left, a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450. Therefore, let them give to us two bowls, let them choose one bowl for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare another bowl and lay it on wood, but put no fire under it. So he said, build an altar over here, build an altar over there. Put, cut up the bowls, lay them on wood, but don't set fire to the wood. No, no fire. And we're going to find out who's the real God. See, he didn't draw back. He said, let's lay it out. Let's make it plain, and we'll find out who's the real God. Let's stop beating around the bush in front of God, in front of government, and in your face, a face-to-face -face confrontation. Let's get it settled. Who's real? Whoever's real. Repent and serve him. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Then he called... Then he said this. He said, prepare them, put no fire on it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of mine. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well. They finally spoke up and said, okay, we'll agree with that. What they should have done is said, we're on your side, Elijah, and just killed the false prophets right there. But because they were so full of compromise and lost all courage and focus on what was right, they needed to have proof that their God was a real God again. Amen. They should have said, you don't have to prove anything to us, God. We know you're true. We repent. Now kill those false liars over there. Amen. But no, they wouldn't open up their mouth and they said, okay, well, we'll agree with whatever proves out to be real. One man alone said, I'm willing to face y'all. And the whole nation hinged on his strength. The whole nation hinged on his ability to stand up for God. Amen. Don't you think what you do, what you compromise, and how you live isn't influencing masses of people that are watching you every day and you're worrying about acceptance? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. Verse 26, so they took the bull, they cut it, they, they gave it, put it on the altar. Listen to these false prophets. <laughs> They start screaming, Baal, here is Baal. But there was no voice. No one answered. Then they leaped about, hopped about, all around the altar. And, and made all kinds of noise. And it was at noon that Elijah mocked them. God didn't send a prophet 
to be acceptable. Do you know that Islam doesn't care about what you like? Islam thinks you're a joke because you worry about what other people think. Islam thinks America needs to die because it bows to other nations. Islam thinks it's their sacred honor, right, and duty to destroy compromising Christians because they stand for nothing. Islam doesn't care about what you think. And they're very bold about what they think and they'll tell you to your face. Meanwhile, we're walking around apologizing. You better wake up. The greatest amount of Christian persecution has happened in other countries in the last 10 years than all other Christian history put together. And you're still asleep. While I'm preaching, there's a thousand Christians being sold into slavery or murdered every hour. While we're sitting here deciding whether or not people will like us. Amen. While Islam's sitting over making the next bomb so they can kill the infidel Christians and prove their God's true. You better wake up. Compromisers, sellouts, as if your God's not the real God, you need to repent. They're all hopping around. Here's the political correct prophet. Starts mocking them. Well, right in the middle of their service. You didn't have any respect? No. That's why I'm not called to respect other relationships that drag you to hell and they're false gods. I don't respect them and I don't honor them. I don't think they should be killed. I'm not going to go out and persecute them. But I will not bow. I will not apologize. And I sure am not going to give them equal opportunity. They're not equal. They're the still of men's souls. Elijah mocked them, hallelujah, and said, cry louder, for he is God. Either he is meditating or he's busy. You're going to have to scream louder, boys. He can't hear you. He must be preoccupied. <laughs> That's how he respected them. Right in the middle of their service. Right in the middle of their holy offering. Their sacred sacrifice. Your God must be deaf. Scream louder. You actually look it up in the Hebrew. You know what he, one of the things he said? You got to scream louder. Your God's going to the restroom. He's busy right now. That's exactly what it said in the Hebrew. He's taking a dump. You got to scream harder. Oh, brother, you can't preach like that. Why not? A real prophet of God did. Amen. And God approved it. Amen. Amen. Sit there and bow to these little wooden totem poles and, and oh, you got to respect that. I don't know. What are you talking about? It was a tree yesterday. You cut it down and painted it. Now a demon possesses it and you want me to honor it? Turn it into firewood. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it was noon and he cried and said, Cry louder, either he's meditating or he's busy. Or he is on a journey. Or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried loud and they cut themselves. You know where cutters come from? You know, right now, these teenage girls and boys that cut themselves, these demons right here are cutters. It's part of demonic sacrifice. That's why Satan possesses these kids and says, cut yourself. Sacrifice to me. Jesus ran into it at the demoniac of, of gatherings, sleeping in the tombs, bound with chains, cut himself every day with sharp rocks. It's a demon. And you cannot psychoanalyze it out of somebody. It's a devil. Wake up, church. Amen. Amen. Why is it they're cutting themselves to sacrifice to their gods? Get a hint. And they cried aloud and cut themselves as was their custom with knives and spears until the blood gushed out of them. And when midday was passed, this went on for hours. And when midday was passed, they prophesied until the time of the offering and of the evening sacrifice. All day long, their so-called God 
never answered. Their wooden idols never responded. Their false gods don't answer prayer. Until the evening sacrifice. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Verse 30. Then Elijah, are you, he, Elijah standing there mocking him for hours. Cut yourself deeper. You're not bleeding enough. Come on, try harder. You call that screaming? Your God's deaf. You got to do a lot better than that, boy. No, wait a minute. Right now he's taking a dump. Hang on a minute. All right, now scream loud. He's just mocking him for hours. You political correct preachers. Okay, are you done? Have you bled enough? They're so hoarse and weak. They couldn't stand. They couldn't scream anymore. Elijah said, I guess you must be done. My turn. That's a type and shadow of your life. You can sweat. You can bleed. You can work yourself into exhaustion. God's not going to answer on your terms. Amen. Amen. And when you're done, then something's going to happen. But you've got to get done first. And it doesn't matter. Don't you see how much I'm crying? Don't you see how much I'm screaming? Don't you see how much I'm sweating? Don't you see how hard I'm working? Don't you see what the cost of my blood? He's not interested. Amen. Look at what our government's doing. Look at what our government thinks. He doesn't care. Amen. He cares about what he thinks. Amen. Somebody said, I'm glad I came, Pastor. I'm glad I came, Pastor. And he said to the people, come near to me now. So all the people gathered near to him as he stood by the altar. And he repaired the altar and the Lord was broken of the Lord that was broken down, and Elijah took two stones, according to the numbers, or twelve stones, I'm sorry, according to the numbers of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. He dug a trick, a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two seahs of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, laid it on the excuse me, laid it on the wood, filled the water pots with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. He's got this bull all cut, cut up, laid on the wood, dug a trench around it, said, Now get all the buckets of water, pour it on the meat, on the wood, and in the trench. Not only did he not light it. He made it ten times harder than the prop, false prophets had it. Theirs was dry. It was just on wood waiting for their dead God to do something. Elijah said, now let's find out the real God. I want you to soak the meat, soak the wood, and pour water around the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he said, verse 34, then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Twice they drenched it with water. Do it a third time. And they did it a third time, 35. So the water ran all around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass at that time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac and Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things because you told me to. Let everybody witness it, Lord. Do it out and open. Do it in front of their faces. I'm not ashamed of you. I 